the Ride of Silence poem. This was written by Mike Burgess. It says, Tonight we number many, but Ride is one, in honor of those not with us, friends, mothers, fathers, sisters, sons. With helmets on tight, heads down low, we ride in silence, cautious and slow. The wheels start spinning in the lead pack, but tonight we ride and no one attacks. The dark sunglasses cover our tears, remembering those we held so dear. Tonight's ride is to make others aware the road is there for all to share. To those not with us or by our side, may God be your partner on your final ride. So now we observe just a brief moment of silence before we quit for a ride of silence. You don't know, started in 2003 in Dallas, Texas, when a uh, when a rider was killed uh, being passed by a school bus, of all things. And within two weeks, the Dallas community organized, uh, arrived, and turned out a thousand riders. And that was the inception of the ride of silence. And now it takes place in uh, across the world, seven continents, uh, 22 countries. 50 states in the United States, and then uh, over 400 cities this year. So it's, uh, it's uh, gained a huge momentum to recognize those that are killed on the highways and to promote the safety of cycling, awareness with the motorists to be out there sharing the roads and promoting our cycling safety. stand up and project over everybody and she doesn't have a big mouth like me so <laughs> hello everybody I'm gonna have um, Dr. Ryan Lazar tell you more about Alright so since Tamika stopped spoken she'd asked me if I would speak tonight to be her voice so hopefully it doesn't mean I'm I'm too loud or something but I'm here I'm here to speak to you so since she's so soft spoken and, and polite and to spread her message here this is obviously specific to uh, people with disabilities, individuals with disabilities. Uh, this is near and dear to our heart at a lot of organizations that I'm honored to be a part of. Uh, I represent the Dearborn Schools and we have our Director of Special Education here tonight, Micah Saley. Um, I'm also on the board at HYPE, so some of our board members, Ali Sayed and uh, most of our, some of our board members from HYPE are here, who also share the same type of cause and getting the community healthy and whatnot and with individuals with disabilities specifically. Uh, this is a great organization. Uh, specifically, Tamika and I sit on the Inclusive Health Committee, which is uh, part of the Healthy Dearborn Coalition. And our charge is to uh, take special needs individuals, people with disabilities, and get them involved in the same type of activities the rest of us are, and, and get them healthy as well. And that is who we are specifically honoring this evening. And uh, it's wonderful to be a part of this. And through the coalition, I thank Mr. Saley for making me a part of it and asked me to sit on this because I've met a lot of new wonderful people and even connected with some organizations I'm also affiliated with, you know, the city and, uh, and through Wayne State and whatnot that I'm also a part of. So it's been a wonderful experience and Tamika for sure is the star of the evening. We want to recognize her. Woo yeah. We thank you for all the work you're doing and, and we're making some great gains and, and looking to even do more. And, and Healthy Dearborn is exactly what Dearborn is. We're, we're working to collaborate to, and to be one Dearborn. In this way, we're looking to be one healthy Dearborn. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, more specifically to our rollers, um, today is the recognized worldwide ride of silence. Um, we always have a nice, safe ride in Dearborn. Um, we stick together and we have a good time. Um, today I ask that we have uh, no music, no whistles, no horns. Um, we want to keep the idle chatter to a minimum. We're bringing our, our, our level of recognition down um, to honor those uh, that have lost their lives and those who have been uh, injured in vehicle bike crashes. Um, like I said, we're very lucky in Dearborn. We haven't had anything happen. We ca we carry a safe ride. We do everything in our power to make sure that everybody sticks together and is safe. We're visible. Um, 
but uh, on a statewide uh, level, um, since <coughs> last year's Ride of Silence, uh, we've lost 17 bikers. So I want to just take a moment just to read their names, um, to show uh, the sincerity of uh, what, what we think about every time we go out for a ride um, on our own or in groups uh, in and around Dearborn and Detroit. Um, there's, in 2017, there was Jeremy Smith from Portage, Clarence Dornboss from Grand Rapids, Carla Reifer from Middleville, Ian Nigo from Holland, Mike Seaman from Mount Pleasant, Sister Joseph Marie Luceman from Alma, Kyle Hodder from Grand Rapids, David Watson from Grass Lake, Milda Ferrer from Grand Rapids, Jessica Anderson from Clinton Township, David Williamson from Traverse City, uh, James LaRue from Sullivan Township, Kara Passick from Charlotte, uh, Brian Kreiner from Mason Township, and just in 2018 we've already had three, Jonathan Perline from Holland in January, Joe Tucker from Lansing in March, Amanda Marie Pardo in August Township uh, just this past April. Um, in Dearborn, in the past year, we've had two Dearborn High uh, school students hit by cars. Very minor, um, they both they didn't have any serious injuries, but uh, they were hit by cars. Uh, we have to make sure that we're aware of what's going on around us especially in the age of electronics. Uh, distracted driving is more and more prevalent and more and more an issue for all of us. Um, so it's really important for us to um, be aware. Um, we have a special guest tonight. Um, I have Amanda here. She's part of our Healthy Dearborn Coalition with United Way. Last year, it was recorded uh, in Detroit and I let her tell her story. Um, she was hit while bike commuting. She's very, very lucky and blessed to be here with us today. So I was thinking about what to say and I just kind of wanted to keep it short and I can post the news story in the group after if anyone wants to read more. Um, but the long story short was I was riding about a six mile ride from Detroit to downtown Detroit on July 25th. It was a Tuesday morning. I was going to work and I was riding at Third and Temple and so right by the Masonic Temple, for people who aren't familiar with streets. And I was going straight through an intersection in the bike lane and a gravel truck, one of the double trailer gravel trucks turned right in front of me and the second trailer went over me. And so I ended up at Detroit Receiving. I was there for, about, I think 85 days. And then, so I was there for 85 days. The first day I was in surgery, the first surgery lasted about eight hours. And that was when they came out of it, they told, like, my mom is sitting right here. And so they told my mom, they weren't sure if I was going to live. They said, we think if she makes it through tonight, she's probably going to be okay. But we're not sure if she's going to be able to keep her life. And for those of you, most of you didn't know me before, I was a runner. I played soccer two to five nights a week. I rode my bike to work almost every day. You know, I was always going. I'd, I'd go kayaking in the summer. I was a swimmer. I'd go hiking. I was very active. <laughs> So the question of losing a leg was kind of intense. And so they actually had to tell my mom, like, you know, we're not sure if we're going to keep the leg, we're going to prioritize for life. She was like, yes, please. <laughs> please do that. And so I actually, over the next couple months, it beca I became more stable. I had skin grafts. I had skin grafts on approximately 70% of my leg because it took a lot of the skin off my leg. I'm missing a hamstring and all of this stuff. My leg was crushed. And so it's been a question of what is the recovery going to look like after it became clear that I was actually going to make it. And the ER staff told my sister that I was the most stubborn patient they've ever seen. So my advice to everyone is to pay attention when you're driving because you're in and around the bicycling community and you know like I know sometimes I'll go to turn right or I will be catching myself going too fast down a one-way street. I'm like not thinking about it. You know, most accidents for bicycles happen in the middle of blocks, 
not on the corners and whatever because people stop thinking about it. They, you know, and they start going faster and whatever happens and that's where in the middle of blocks is the exit step. Pay attention when you're driving because you're going to be showing other people how to drive. You're going to make sure you're telling people how to drive and educating people and talking about it. Make sure you're stopping when they're, you know, you don't sit in the bike lane because then the bikes have to go around it and all of these things that you think about when you're riding your bike and you're not thinking about when you're behind the wheel. Make sure you're talking about these things because these are the important things. We shouldn't have to have bike lanes because everyone should know how to share the road. But we don't. And I know I kept myself like, did I did I look before I turned right? I don't know. And I I know he hit me while he was turning right. I should be the first person to think of that and I don't. So that's for that. And then also I am I was not wearing a helmet for an accident. I noticed that helmets are required today. And I <laughs> My mom makes me promise that next time I ride a bike, I wear a helmet. And that was, so the only reason I didn't have like a traumatic brain injury was that I was I had a laptop on my back, and my head happened to land on the laptop. Wow! So completely by chance, and all of these things, there was at least five different things that should have killed me at that one time. And it, so when the doctors said it's a miracle, we're like, yeah, we believe you. But the only other thing I have to say is I got 37 units of blood. 24 of those were in the first 12 hours. So if you're able to, you would donate blood to whichever organization you choose to donate to. I personally would appreciate that and someone down the line probably will as well. So that's, thank you all for being here. And very, very last comment is, this is like a sobering ride. It's a somber ride, but I don't want you to think of it as not fun. Because one of the reasons that I was able to recover is because <laughs> and we were joking from day one. Like the first night, I was in, I had I was intubated. You know, I couldn't move, and my sister was going to leave. And she goes, "Do you love me?" And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "So like from that very first day, we were already telling jokes. We were already laughing. We were ready to go." And so while it's sobering, and there's a lot of families that are hurting right now because they didn't have as great of an outcome as I did, but. Don't think of it as not fun, just think of it as awareness of what can happen and will happen. So. Thank you. And Amanda was hoping to ride with us tonight. She has a trike on corner, but does not have it yet, so she's unable. So she will be joining us in the future, I hope. Um, so, again, um, we, we still want you to enjoy the ride, um, but take it down just a little bit and think about um, what you can do as a motor, motor vehicle operator as well uh, to make a difference. Stir 